All right, gang, before we jump into this video, I just wanted to apologize. The audio and the uh, screen share and where I'm in Amazon uh, showing you all the parts is extremely low. I ordered a new microphone. Um, the existing microphone doesn't like my computer the, or the one I have plugged in. Um, if you'll turn the volume way up and get in a really quiet place, you can hear me. Otherwise, uh, at least there's all the parts when it goes over to the next section where I break down where everything goes or where I put everything uh, That volume level should return back to a decent level. Uh, so enjoy the video and uh, As soon as I get a new microphone, I will try to remake it uh, With a little bit better quality audio audio. Thanks um, This is the Chroma my plasm CNC controller and torch height controller. I did buy it from Automation Technology. They sent it out to uh, FedEx. Had it within a few days of ordering it. Uh, highly suggest it. It's been uh, really, really simplifies the interface between your computer and just seemed way easier than a lot of the other controllers. I uh, didn't have to mess around with Mach 3 or Mach 4, uh, sheet cam, none of that stuff. Uh, it's one-stop shop. Take the table, hardware, and plug it into the controller and USB to the computer, and you're off to the races. So uh, this is where it started. Okay, so this list is not in order. Um, in lieu of not jumping around, I'm just going to go down each one. So this is simply a pass through to connect from the controller through the box that all the electronics are mounted in so I can run a cable from this to the computer without having to open the box or leaving a wire hanging out of it. Linear rails, 1500 millimeter, there's a pair of them with four blocks, uh, 104 bucks. Stepper online. This is the NEMA 24, so this is what I'm using on the x-axis. Um, had to purchase one of these, 115 bucks. Uh, this you can find the NEMA 23 and 24 in open loop or standard for a little bit cheaper. I'm running the closed loop setup. So far, I can't tell you whether it's better or or worth it or whatever the case is. Um, but I'm from everything I understand it'll self-correct so sounds to me like it could keep from wasting some expensive steel idler pulleys for the timing belt this is for the y-axis again and let me back up the NEMA 24 is for the x-axis so single one for the x-axis for the y-axis you need four of these idler pulleys uh, 8 millimeter shaft diameter, 15 millimeter belt width. These are the drive pulleys right here. Uh, for the X axis, you're going to need two of these 10 millimeter bore, 15 millimeter belt, 5 millimeter pitch. Like I said, times two. You'll need two of these. Um, the This is the belt for the Y axis that I used. I can't remember if I ordered one or two, but. If it's three meters, that would, I'm pretty sure I just ordered one and cut it in half. I'm pretty sure. Okay, this was the linear rails and ball screw that I used for the x-axis. Um, 139 bucks. It's gone down already because I want to say I paid 160 for it. This is the drive gear for the y-axis. Again, you're going to need two of these. These are the NEMA 23 closed loop stepper motors for the Y axis, so 95 bucks two times. For the cable chain, I bought three at 18 bucks a piece and took one of them and basically split it apart, broke it in half, and added it to the other two to make enough length for what I needed to do. And it was more than enough, way more than enough. <coughs> this is the e-stop button I got which I do not like I would not suggest it supposed to you push it in it locks in um, 
and then you twist it and it releases and so far the twist and release you push it in it does not lock in anymore and the twist to release is not locking in you can't release anything so uh, try a different one they're three wire pretty simple um, hell it may even be two wire actually I think it's two wire uh, this is what I used for the z-axis um, Again, this is the 50 millimeter, and I have both the 50 and the 100 millimeter. 100 millimeter just I'm trying to save on weight, and I don't see any use or need in more than 50 millimeters of stroke. And so far, that's been the case. I have not had any issues, so I would stick with the 50 millimeter. It should work just fine. Power supplies: 48 volt times three. Have one for every stepper motor. Um, And I think I'm running the z-axis off of the basically the NEMA 24 in the z-axis for running off of one power supply. The this uh, z-axis system here comes with the stepper motor, but it does not come with the driver. So this is the driver I ordered. Stepper online again. Uh, it's worked great. Computer. Uh, yes, I have a nice laptop, but I figured let's have a designated computer for the CNC machine. Uh, this is what I ordered, the exact one. My son did come put a nice graphics card in it to run dual monitors, but I have, uh, I'm running Fusion 360 on it, uh, Inkscape on it. Uh, the, obviously the MyPlasm software. And uh, it's, it's been great. I've got no complaints. It's worked flawlessly. Uh, it does not come with a monitor. I had a couple of monitors laying around, so used it. Uh, this is the belt for the z-axis for that NEMA 24 motor. It's a pretty heavy belt. comes with two of them. You only need one. I figured why not have an extra. These are the uh, limit switches that I used on the, the z or y and x-axis. Uh, three of them is what I needed. So three packs what I bought. I did try proximity switches, but I, not knowing any better ordered normally closed proximity switches and instead of just ordering another set of normally opens I went with these because keep it simple stupid they work and uh, so far they've been working fine okay uh, wire this is 22 gauge 4 strand 500 foot roll 50 bucks you do not need anywhere near 500 feet for this thing but um, this is what I'm using to power the stepper motor, motors, and uh, so far no issues. It's been plenty. Uh, the this is 22 gauge, six conductor. This is for the closed loop reluctor wheel. On the back side of it, it requires uh, six conductors, and this was only a 125 foot roll. And once again, I still have plenty left over. Um, so yeah. Last for Scamazon is uh, these adjustable roller limit switches. I needed this adjustable arm for the Z-axis to make it work. But uh, I only need one. Once again, why not have an extra? So that's pretty much on the Amazon list for all the particulars. Feel free to pause and get any numbers off of here you want. But th these literally are the exact parts that I ordered for this machine. All right, um, next I guess we'll go through placement and how everything was run. All right, <clears throat> now I'm gonna break down um, all the parts in this machine, where, what is, so forth, so on. I guess we'll start with the NEMA 23s all right here. Um, this is where you're gonna need the four idler pulleys. Let's see if I can get you down in here. Excuse my horrible welds. But an idler to idler and then a geared pulley. Um, that's how that's set up on both sides. So um, each side is that way. The um, Z axis, here is that device right here. So this is the 50 millimeter stroke. I have the um, 
100 millimeter stroke, but it's not really needed. Um, took this idea from somebody else or another build. This is a 34 millimeter scope clamp um, for a rifle scope, and then a short Picatinny rail allows me to raise and lower and set that height at whatever I need it to be for whatever material I'm using here. Um, for the X axis, so I have the NEMA 24, which has this goofy bolt pattern that you can't find mounts for. Um, this setup is on a single bolt tightening down, so it this uh, ratchets up and down to loosen or tighten the belt. Uh, you'll notice the belt's kind of loose, but the teeth are aggressive enough that I found you can get it tighter, but it's more strain on the actual stepper motor than is needed. Uh, the teeth are aggressive enough, it's not going to skip even with that much slack in it. So, um, that's just, it's run the best that way for me. I haven't had to adjust it since I put it together. Um, I was going to drill it and put a second bolt in it, but I never did and haven't had to. The, uh, <clears throat> go back to the front. The belt for the Y axis. It's just clamped in right here. I don't know if you can see it there. Um, clamped in right here. Run all the way back here. This setup right here was relatively simple. Inch and a quarter square tubing, I think 14 gauge. One inch square tubing, 11 gauge. Cut a small piece, welded a jam nut on the bottom of it. For the tensioning on the one inch piece I welded a stud to it so that's all it is right there um, stick it in I left plenty of belt just to make adjustments if I need to do anything different. Of course, this was first time. I don't put tools on it. I tighten it up as tight as I can get it with my fingers. And it's usually pretty tight. This belt is um, it's got the metal strands inside of it and it, it tensions up really well. Um, no issues with it. Um, as far as the end stops are concerned, uh, just cheap they work fine uh, note on the pla my plasm CNC controller <clears throat> if you run two y-axis motors you have to run two end stops uh, it will not work with just one end stop you have to have an end stop on each side z-axis this is where I had to order the the longer one um, or with the extended arm, I guess you would say, adjustable extended arm. Uh, this is the factory torch that came with the Harbor Freight plasma cutter. Ignore this wire, it was supposed to be a homing device touching the steel, but I still haven't been able to make that work. Uh, doesn't appear to need it. Um, as far as the box and all the steppers is concerned, that's it. Uh, box is 12 inches by 12 inches by 6 inches deep. Uh, these are stainless repurposed. This one is isolated from the frame on these rubber mounts. Those actually came off of a MSD ignition 6AL box. Um, that's where those isolators came from. This box holds all the power supplies and it, it's got fans in the bottom of it and other than that it is not isolated. It's directly to it. Um, Direct mounted directly to the frame. So, uh, this is right off the machine, no cleanup. I um, guess you can't see it very well there. Not bad, could be better, but well, I'll say that ain't, ain't a whole lot better. I've still got some slag. This is 14 gauge, so this is pretty thin. I've had uh, cut so far on it 14 gauge, eighth inch, and quarter inch steel plate and have not had any speed issues um, 
have not had any issues cutting anything of that size so uh, that's pretty much it and I appreciate y'all watching and if you've got any more questions leave them in the comments and uh, y'all have a good day